Hello, I'm Professor Peter Taylor of the University of Oxford, United Kingdom. Rheumatoid arthritis is characterised by inflammatory activity and joint damage that often result in disability, pain, limitations in physical function and other impairments important to patients. Outcomes can be improved with effective therapy. Baricitinib is an oral selective inhibitor of JAK1 and JAK2. This paper describes the PRO data collection in RA-BEAM and assesses whether the efficacy of baricitinib demonstrated in RA-BEAM is reflected by clinically meaningful changes in PROs. RA-BEAM was a randomised, double-blind, placebo and active-controlled, multi-centre, international phase 3 study. Patients were randomly assigned to receive placebo or baricitinib 4 mg once daily or bi-weekly subcutaneous adalinumab 40 mg in addition to their existing background therapy which included methotrexate. After week 16, patients could receive rescue treatment at the investigator's discretion on the basis of joint counts. Patients completing the 52-week study either entered a long-term extension study or were followed for 28 days. The primary endpoint of the study was met. ACR20 responses at week 12 for baricitinib 4mg were significantly greater than placebo and adalinumab. Significant improvements in many efficacy measures and PROs were observed as early as week 1 for baricitinib versus placebo and as early as weeks 2 through 4 for baricitinib as compared with adalinumab. Measures of efficacy were maintained or improved through week 52. PROs were pre-specified secondary outcomes of the study. As previously reported, statistically significant improvements in the baricitinib group versus placebo were evident as early as week 1 for HACDI, patient global and patient pain. Significant improvements in physical function and reductions in patient global and pain were maintained at week 12 and through week 52. When compared with adalinumab, significant improvements in HACDI were seen as early as week 4 and at week 2 for patient global and pain. These improvements were maintained at week 12 and through week 52. The percentages of patients who reported improvements that met or exceeded the HACDI minimally clinically important difference of greater than or equal to 0.22 at week 12 was statistically significantly higher for baricitinib versus placebo and numerically higher than adalinumab. By week 52, significantly more baricitinib than adalinumab treated patients met or exceeded the MCID. Some PROs were recorded using an electronic daily diary. Analyses were based on the average of scores collected on the seven days prior to the study visit. Baricitinib showed rapid and statistically significant reductions versus placebo as early as week one or two in duration of morning joint stiffness, severity of morning joint stiffness, worse joint pain and worse tiredness. At week 12 versus adalinumab, Baricitinib showed statistically significantly greater improvement in each of these parameters. Treatment with baricitinib or adalinumab was associated with significant improvements in facet F at the first assessment of the measure at week 4, and the improvements in the facet F score were sustained to week 24 for both baricitinib and adalinumab versus placebo and were significant at weeks 20, 28 and 52 for baricitinib versus adalinumab. Patients treated with baricitinib or adalinumab showed statistically significant improvements compared with placebo in most of the eight SF36 domains at week 12. Compared with adalinumab, patients treated with baricitinib showed statistically significant improvements in all of the physical domains at week 52. Statistically significant improvements in the EQ5D UK score was observed at the first post-baseline assessment, that's at week 4, for both baricitinib and adalinumab versus placebo and was maintained to week 12. By week 52, statistically significant improvements in EQ5D index scores were observed for baricitinib versus adalinumab. Additional information not available in this video were the baseline characteristics of the patients, the SF36 domains, the EQ5D using the US algorithm, 
the patient's rating of their current health status using the EQ5D visual analog scale, and work productivity using the WPAIRA measure. These analyses are described within the paper or the supplemental material. I invite you to read further about these endpoints. In conclusion, the results presented expand the clinical data previously published from the RA Beam Phase 3 study to incorporate a large array of patient reported outcomes, further confirming that baricitinib is an effective treatment for patients with an inadequate response to methotrexate.